It's July. Nebraska's got additions, and they also have a lack of additions. We'll talk about it today on the show. You are Locked On Nebraska, your daily Nebraska Cornhuskers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Good morning, and thanks for making Locked On Nebraska your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts, and we're on YouTube as well, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. And as we head into the doldrums of the summer, the uh, sports stop sportsing like we want them to. But this summer, FanDuel is hooking all customers up with a bonus or a boost daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Head to FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. Okay, it's July. Connor, can you believe it? We made it. July 1st, June is gone. The big recruiting push of June is 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 over. Happy um, conference realignment day. Everybody's in a different conference today. It is. It is. I think the I think the Big 10 editions actually come at the Later. end of the month, but yes. um yeah, we got the we got the Texas and Oklahoma celebrations on uh on Sunday and today um in austin and norman like big big moments as the sec gets bigger and badder and nastier and and well i'm sure that there was huge celebrations on the campuses of cal stanford and smu today as they moved to the oh, acc yeah. um so yeah i didn't i didn't see anything yet but you know the day's long <laughs> it didn't, hasn't, hasn't popped into my social feeds at this point but that quite yeah for sure for sure stanford i mean what a day for them i mean just think about the frequent flyer miles that are that are coming <laughs> their way so <laughs> nothing changes at nebraska the huskers are sticking in the big 10 for now and they've got a roster to figure out for both 2024 and, and 2025 and we figured as we got to july 1st and we come out of june which was expected to be such a big month with change as far as recruiting went and roster additions and, and actually turned out to be um some some of that that we would get into the weeds a bit and and look at some of the things that Nebraska's added for this team and and for its recruiting class. Um, we'll get into that throughout the show today. We'll look at the offensive line. We'll look at the at the the secondary, which has both of which have have changed in the present and the future somewhat here in the last week. Um, to start, Nebraska finished June with five recruiting additions for its 2025 class. That is less than half of what it gathered a year ago at this time for the 2024 class in the month of June. We we asked the question on Friday a, as to whether this June lull in recruiting was a concern. And I, I will say this after after pondering it some more over the weekend and, and seeing Nebraska add a, a couple of commitments at the very end of, of the month of June. I'm going to say it's not a big deal if and this is a big if Nebraska is able to start the season well and get to bowl eligibility by November 1st. That's the eighth game of the season when UCLA comes into town. I think if that's the case, then recruiting heading down the stretch, whatever is left, if there's anything left or if there's anything that needs to be refined, is going to take care of itself. Totally. Got to win. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And, you know, I, I think they, they set themselves up like they set the seeds this summer, even though they didn't end up with – with a bunch of uh, commitments, but they did recruit a lot of high profile guys. I mean, they, they really shot their shots at, at, you know, highly ranked players, whether they were on the offensive line or, or elsewhere, we're talking high four star and like borderline five star mm -hmm. players receiver. and, you yeah. know, yeah, receiver as well. So, you know, you don't get any points for getting second place or third place in a recruitment, but um, you know, in this, in this day and age, you can always stay in it. You were talking about two, a year, two and three years down the line when we're talking yeah. about the transfer portal or, you know, the class doesn't sign until December. So if Nebraska can pick some momentum up by starting off their season, well, we've talked about their, their light start a whole bunch on the show, you know, it could, it could really get the ball rolling downhill for them in, in recruiting as well. I would expect that to happen. Now it's, it's, you know, the, the later you go, the later you are into the process. So it doesn't, you know, it doesn't always come together like seamlessly, but I'm with you. It, it's, it's not the, it's not a gigantic concern. I still think the staff is going to be able to recruit really well. It's just, they don't have like, they don't have what 
the other schools have that they're recruiting against at this point, which is the proof of performance. And so, um, you know, you can only do that by playing the games and then you figure it out as you go. They're at, they're at 13, which is a good number to be at. Um, it's fine um, when you're not going to sign a huge class on July 1st after the pledge on Sunday from Houston Kahina Torres. I hope that I got the, 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 the middle part of that right. So that's a double A twice in Would the middle. Would it be Kahaina? 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 I don't yeah, know I don't. if we're going <laughs> with the full double A sound on both instances in that name. I don't either. I don't um, know either. We'll find out. Uh, we'll find out when when he makes it to, to Lincoln. He's out of Honolulu, St. Louis, which is a football factory. Um, and, and, you know, this is reminiscent of like 25 years ago when Nebraska was mining the state of Hawaii for the likes of uh, Dominic Riola and Tony Finotti and, and others. Those two in particular stand out because of the their greatness on the O-line. And as it stands, um, there's a little bit of a connection to just a small connection to uh, to that that um, collection of people that I just mentioned again with um, you may have heard uh, Dominic's son taking over um, as the premier quarterback in the Nebraska program this season and his brother coaching the offensive line. So uh, Houston, we'll go first name here, nice. Houston from Honolulu. Uh, and then Brian Tapu from um, Salt Lake City were, were the two latest commits for Nebraska in the 25 class. Both play the offensive line. Both are of Polynesian descent. So uh, Nebraska appears to be opening up that poly pipeline um, yet again, which is which is good news. Maybe the future of the offensive line. We'll talk about that um, a little bit more of the offensive line in the second segment. But I do want to spend a minute here, Connor, and get your thoughts on the player that Nebraska missed over the weekend. Millard South tied in Chase Lofton, four-star prospect, big-time target from the state of Nebraska. He was, um, along with Christian Jones, the uh, the apple of Nebraska's eye in state, committed to Florida State um, this weekend on the heels of his uh, his official visit to Nebraska last week. What, uh, what's, your, what's your thought there? Um, so, you know, and once again, it, we're still relatively – you know, early kind of in the, in the cycle, like, I, I guess it's getting later. So you never, you never know exactly how it's going to turn out. Um, but he was a, you know, he was a sought after recruit in the state, probably one of the top, you know, two or three guys um, from the state and, you know, just kind of went away from Nebraska over the last three or four weeks here as he looked toward Florida state and some others that he kind of got it down to. I don't know, even know that Nebraska was kind of in the final two from what it, what it seemed like there. Um, but you know, let let's use this as an opportunity to talk about what what Nebraska, the state of Nebraska, has produced at that position, tight end over the last like decade. Basically, I, right. I went back and I looked through the recruiting databases this morning. I counted like more than fifteen guys um, who have been either you know I, I, we're talking about FBS tight ends, and most of them are Power Five tight ends over the last like seven or eight classes here which is pretty unbelievable. And some of these guys have ended up being really, really good. Um, yeah. You yeah, just added another one in there. You got Ben Bramer who ended up, I, I'm not going to name all the guys because there's just so many of them. I don't know, probably a quarter or a third of them have ended up on Nebraska's roster. I'm not saying that they're a dime a dozen. Obviously you want to get guys that are really good from, from the borders of your state. And I'm not trying to minimize it, but man, that position, I, I don't know what has happened there at in the state of Nebraska. We're talking about big kids who who are really athletic, and boom, they end up going, you know, power five and, and playing tight end. So um there there there's there's a lot of options there at that position from within the borders of your own state. It's like the state of Nebraska is two states. It's like it's one state for players who play every position except tight end. And you know, it's 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 difficult to churn out running backs and quarterbacks and corners and linebackers and, and defensive ends, all those positions, you know, when you get one, wow, you, if you're in Nebraska, you better, you better find a way to get that guy on campus. And, and it's just really special if there's a great quarterback in the state of Nebraska or, or, a, you know, a safety. And then there's another state that's also Nebraska. And it's, it's the state that produces tight ends. And I don't know if it's just that like, there's a lot of kids of that size 
who all, instead of being power forwards in basketball or defensive ends or, you know, whatever you might do athletically, they all play the tight end position because of the way that high school offenses are constructed or, or I don't know what it is, but going back to like Noah Fant and then you put, you know, Cam Jurgens on this list, yeah. uh, those guys are in the yeah. NFL. And then it's like two, three, four, five a year who were going to power five schools. Um, and Nebraska's missed its share of these players. And we're not even including Thomas Fedoni, who is basically a Nebraska kid. He grew up, right. in, grew up around Omaha and went to school in Council Bluffs, you know, a Nebraska fan growing up. You got Carter Nelson coming in in this class, this freshman class this summer. Um, and then in the 20, in the 25 class that's, that's currently being recruited, um, there's a Stanford commit in Ryman Zebert from Platteview High School. And now there's a Florida State commit um, in, in Chase Lofton. And there's still some others out there. And then 26 is full of, is full of tight ends again. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's like Nebraska produces tight ends like a state with like six times its population it should does. produce tight ends. I wonder, like, uh, this would be way too deep of a research project, but maybe something we have time for in July. Like, you could actually... Now, not all the recruiting databases are like 100% accurate in terms of which players are going to play what position, but like Nebraska per capita has to be number one in, in tight ends, like mm -hmm. with, with compared to its population has to be number one. So, you know, like, like we said, the, and the position is, you know, changed a lot over the years as well. Um, I think it's a loss, you know, for Nebraska and, and, and um, that's a guy whose stock, you know, kind of continues to be on the rise going into his senior year now playing at Millard South. So It'll yeah. continue to kind of go up from there. But with that being said, Nebraska's tight end position right now, as it stands on its roster, is, is you know, in really good shape. And Dude. it's not like there's going to be a shortage coming up. So you can you can lose one at that position if that's the position where you lose one. Yeah, And, and a footnote to what I was talking about, Cam Jurgens, I, I recognize, was recruited as a tight end and is no longer playing that position. That's He's why I listen. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right. But, I mean, the guys <laughs> on the Nebraska <laughs> roster – until Scott Frost is like, I think he's going to be like a Hall of Fame center. And then the, you know. the best personnel move that Scott yeah. Frost made in his career. I mean, in addition to Fedoni on the Nebraska roster, guys who did decide to, to come to Nebraska, even the walk-ons who come to Nebraska turn out to be um, hits like Nate Borkercher and Luke Lindenmeyer. And then Nebraska, of course, has added Eric Ingerson um, out of Papillion in addition to to Carter Nelson, who you know is expected to be uh, – uh, maybe an All American. I don't know. Let's not put too much on Carter before he takes his first uh, his first rep in Lincoln. But um, he's a special kid. So, um, all right. When we come back, we are going to get more into what's been going on on the offensive line. We mentioned the um, the Polynesian pipeline that's uh, that's forming, and we will talk about that and what that potentially means for Nebraska in uh, in twenty twenty five and beyond. Um, Want to let you know first to follow us on Twitter or X at Locked On Neb. Email us. Talk to us about what you want to hear on the show um, and make sure to to uh, download our show, subscribe to our show, rate our show, do whatever you do with podcasts on Apple and Spotify. Um, if you're listening right now, check us out on YouTube. Um, we're uh, we're up there. Um, you can see us as we uh, as we talk to each other um, during this uh, during this fun time. So um, we will be back after the break. All right, it's Happy here for the FanDuel Sportsbook. Uh, we love we love sports here at the Locked On Nebraska podcast. We never want them to stop, but unfortunately, they slow down in the month of in the month of July as the NBA playoffs have come to an end and the NHL playoffs have come to the end. We're past the NBA draft now, but here's what happens: the FanDuel Sportsbook is is here for you because the sports keep going all summer long. I'm looking at it right now. We're talking about international soccer matches, tennis matches. Major League Baseball, of course, every day. We're getting closer to the MLB All-Star Game. WNBA right now, the PGA Tour. There's plenty of stuff. And a favorite, of course, of the Locked On Nebraska podcast, college football win totals. They are all there for you on the FanDuel Sportsbook. So go there. FanDuel is hooking all customers up with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Head over to FanDuel.com slash Locked On and make the most out of your summer with FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball.
All right. Welcome back. Um, we are in July. It's conference realignment day. Of course. Uh, it's also Bobby Bonilla day. If anybody is interested oh, in that, Bobby Bonilla just got paid over a million dollars, um, today, which is great for him. He'll get paid that for another like 10 more years, uh, from the New York Mets. So thank you to the New York Mets for paying. It doesn't Bobby seem Bonilla. like that happens three times a year. Why, why do I, <laughs> I mean, these years just go by so fast. Like Bobby Bonilla day. It seems to me like a, if you'd have asked me in November and I said, yeah, I think that happens in March. And the, well, here we are. It's like every month he's, he's, he's worked this thing so that he gets his million dollars nine times a year. It's amazing. And, and well, he, he works it. So it's like the only sports topic that happens on July 1st, which is, True. which is really incredible. Uh, but let's talk some offensive line here for Nebraska, as we mentioned. So the Polynesian pipeline, potentially everybody loves to bring up the Polynesian pipeline. So they got Brian, Brian tape who um, out of Utah, which was kind of an odd recruiting situation where he was kind of a lean to Nebraska, uh, then visited Oregon State, committed on that visit, and then within like 72 hours decommitted and then committed to Nebraska. So that was sort of odd. And then it was Kaina Torres, uh, as we talked about in the first segment as well. Uh, Nebraska got big official visits in June from highly touted offensive linemen, one from Bishop Gorman, um, and another a uh, Polynesian offensive lineman as well from the state of Hawaii. So Nebraska has got a little history here as we talked about Mitch. Um, how do, how do we look into Nebraska kind of, you know, having, having some pretty good success here with um, Polynesian offensive linemen. This is a good development and it's a good time for it to happen. I think um, one, it certainly helps to have Dylan Rayola uh, there when, and Dominic Rayola there who, who likes to come into town on, on weekends when Nebraska's hosting official visitors, you know, he's got his name on the stadium. He played 14 years in the NFL. Those kids, you know, uh, play at high schools that, that, um, you know, he has knowledge of or, or played at or against himself. So um, Dominic certainly has some sway in that community. It's a tight knit community. And that's, that's, that's the thing that, that you'll, you'll find about the, the Polynesians. Um, if you, uh, you know, you look into it and I, I talked with the Riolas about this, um, a year and a half or so ago and the Polynesian culture, um, within football is one where they just value the brotherhood so much. So generally, if you start to get one or two of these guys, the next thing, you know, you might have eight of them on your roster. And that's a very good sign for Nebraska when you consider what's happened over the past month, because they didn't just get, um, some of these players to visit. Now they've got two of them on the offensive line to commit. Um, this is in large part, how programs like, I would say, Oregon, Washington, um, and Utah have built great offensive lines is by developing these kind of connections. And it's part of what Nebra made Nebraska's offensive line great um, 20 or so years ago. So this is very encouraging. And the timing seems to be matching up in the sense that you've got a Riola um, at the quarterback position and then another one who coaches the offensive line and is going to be able to have that um, that vibe with these players from the moment that they connect as a coach and prospect in that relationship. So we talked about it earlier, just kind of with the the lack of proof of performance for Nebraska, just in terms of the 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 win column and what they can really recruit to. Nebraska has got some proof of performance with this this type of player at that position, just in its in its mm -hmm. history, kind of in its DNA, like that. That matters so much in recruiting, especially from, you know, from a group of players that, you know, traditionally lives, you know, quite far away from Nebraska and that they, they all come from this sort of family environment. And you say, Hey, look, why should I trust you? If my kid's moving 3000 miles away, 5,000 miles away across the yeah. sea, whatever it might be. And Nebraska has got some, some history there. They got some performance and they have the Riolas in their camp. So like, it can be a place where Nebraska can build that a little bit. I don't, I, you know, like what is that, what does that mean? Just because Nebraska has a really, um, you know, good, you know, clean Polynesian pipeline. Like, what does that mean for its success? I don't know, you know, good players still, still are good players. But with that being said, like if Nebraska kind of open that thing up, it, it opens the door to more possibilities down the line to get more good players. And that's kind of right. what we're talking about. You could end up finding a quarterback as a result of that. There have been some quarterbacks from the state of Hawaii um, as Scott Frost, who, who, uh, who have, uh, made a huge impact on college football. If you want to talk about like Mackenzie Milton, Mackenzie Milton um, yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's all good. It's all, uh, it's all good. It's, 
yeah, these are all, he won a Heisman. There are all, these are all things that can help Nebraska over the short term and, and, and long term. And the other thing with this in the timing of it, what else happens today on July 1st with the, the, the conference restructuring, the PAC 12 is gone. So there <laughs> it ceases to exist as of today. And that has been a comfortable spot for players from Hawaii and Utah and California um, with the Polynesian background to, to just land in the Pac-12. And then they play their football on the West Coast in Arizona, Utah, as far as they have to go east. Um, well, that's no longer an option because if you, 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 know, you go to Utah, um, you're going to be playing games in Texas and West Virginia. Um, and if you go to uh, Oregon or Washington, you're going to be playing games in the same places that Nebraska plays games. Yep. Uh, so <laughs> um, some of that natural advantage that Pac-12 schools had in recruiting the state of Hawaii or recruiting Polynesians um, out of California um, is no longer there. Um, and and Nebraska seems to be intent to be one of the schools that benefits from that. Interesting. Yeah, it's it's I, I totally agree. And then I was looking at a, you know what I just one more thing before we take a break here on that. I was looking at like a map of you know the closest counties and they're all highlighted to to whatever you know power five school or FBS school. Now there's this there's this pocket in the middle of California and in Northern California that has the ACC that's in there too. But the rest of the West coast, it's big 10. Like it's, it's big 10 country. Mm -hmm. Now I don't know if it'll ever feel that way or, or how those West coast schools will kind of like assimilate into the big 10. But I, I do think that's important and it's, it can stretch out, especially a school like Nebraska's recruiting ground. Who's, you know, the, the Western most, um, you know, big 10 school prior to those West coast schools. So like it, you know, there there is something there, and it 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 changes the game and the landscape quite a bit. This is an, also an opportunity for Donovan Raiola to really carve his niche as a recruiter. Um, you know, he's been he's renowned as an offensive line coach. I don't think that's too strong of a word. Um, if if you base that on the opinions of the the linemen who are in the program, they love playing for him. Yep. And you know, one place that he's been, um, you know, slow to develop. Um, as what now going into his third year as a full-time assistant coach in college football is making his mark on the recruiting trail. And this is an opportunity absolutely for him to, to, to be able to separate himself as a recruiter. And the other thing, final thing that you can, that, that w where this can, you know, be a, um, a, of service to Nebraska. And we talked about this on the show on Friday with the, the elimination of staff size limits. Um, look and see who Nebraska might add, who might Nebraska add, um, as a um, an assistant offensive line coach, they already have an assistant offensive line coach in Aaron Coling, but maybe you need a second assistant offensive line coach, or you need someone on campus who can who can help facilitate this pipeline or another pipeline. If it's a Florida pipeline or a Texas pipeline or mm -hmm. a Pennsylvania pipeline, um, the, the 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 reduction in staff limit or reduction. I'm sorry, the elimination of staff limit size um, is something that 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 should not be underestimated. Um, in, in importance when you look at how Nebraska is going to attack recruiting over the, uh, the months and years to come. So yeah, there's, there's literally nothing stopping them right, yeah. from, from, from adding as many as they can from whatever area of the country. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. Coming back after the break, we're going to talk about another addition that Nebraska had this one in the short term in the secondary and how that can help the Huskers in 2024. Um, uh, but first, if you're watching, Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day and you have to turn down the volume with all the shouting, then make the switch to Locked On Sports today. It's a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you to bring you the biggest stories without all that screaming. Locked On Sports today delivers can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, final segment of the show on this Monday to kick off the month of July. Nebraska got a commitment, Connor, on Friday uh, from Sierra Wright. This was like a, a Friday uh, afternoon um, news dump. It's like usually when the contracts and financial <laughs> details are released by uh, universities, like FOIAs get fulfilled. But this was yeah. uh, this was not that. This was Sierra Wright, Sierra Wright. Gosh, we got another one to, uh, to figure out. Um, he played LeBron James' son in Space Jam: A New Legacy. Um, also, was, was was a was a uh, 
uh, appeared in has appeared in multiple TV shows and, and movies over his time. Went to Loyola High School in Los Angeles. I think this is the headline here that Nebraska now has a an accomplished actor on its yeah. uh, on its roster. I, th- I I think that's important, just as important as anything. No, I it's obviously the thing that like. <laughs> You know, you're like Sierra Wright, you know, and you don't list his football bona fides before you're like, oh, he was in Space Jam too. <laughs> yep, that's just as interesting of a fact as anything else. So, like they've they've added some players now this summer. I mean, we we've talked about before on the show how how kind of loaded um, their their classes are on the front side. So they have, I mean, I think it's seventy plus yeah. freshmen and redshirt freshmen at this point. But they've also been able to kind of backfill it a little bit as well. We've talked extensively about Jalen Gramstad before, um, and you know John Hole, who was added, uh, who is a former Lincoln Southwest kicker that was that was committed to Coastal Carolina, and then Makai Nelson, who was originally from Pennsylvania, and then did a prep school year or was going to do a prep school year in Connecticut, and now he's ending up at Nebraska. Um, and so Nebraska's added these players in really interesting, you know, kind of ways. They all have these kind of interesting stories behind them as well, as far as, you know, where they were going to go, where they were going to end up. Um, and, and they kind of have different paths to getting to Nebraska all, you know, who knows, you know, we'll see if they end up helping Nebraska this year. A lot of them are kind of depth pieces. I wonder, Mitch, I mean, at that position, it was clearly somewhere where Nebraska felt like they had to add a body. And so I, I wonder what the impact of right could be. If you had told me coming out of the spring when we saw Bly Hill go down um, with that unfortunate injury in the in the spring game, um, if you'd have told me that Nebraska between now and July first is going to add a potential starter at corner, um, a seemingly perfect depth piece fit at quarterback, a kicker um, who is of Division one caliber to come in and compete with the players who were back. And a running back to this room who was a somewhat highly recruited player and was is still available in in late June. Um, I would have said, wow, like Perfect. that that's that <laughs> these are all for 2024. Um they, they could not have scripted it out any better. Now we'll see if th- th- from a position of need standpoint, they have done well um over the last two to three months to add these pieces and Probably none more important than Sire Wright, who started 11 games at corner for USC in 2022 and then had just an odd year in 23, where he started at the beginning of the season. And we remember USC's defense was a mess, um, was playing for former Nebraska secondary coach Dante Williams out there in L.A. And things kind of fell apart on, on Sire Wright, where he was a reserve and then he wasn't on the team. Um, as the season ended and wasn't on the spring roster, which I imagine played somewhat into the um, predicament that he found himself in here in June where he was stuck in the portal. Um, And Nebraska takes him on an OV. They like what they see. Um, Clearly, whatever concerns there were about what happened in 2023 with him have been answered. And now you have a player who, if he steps up and realizes the potential that he had as a recruit when he was a top 100 guy and as a young corner in L.A., um, you may have a guy who can just like uh, walk in and start um, in place of uh, in place of the injured Bly Hill. Well, I just think getting experience at that, (laughs) that's just something you didn't have, you know, even if even if Bly Hill's healthy. Um, you know, he's, he's played a lot of games, but not necessarily at this, you know, kind of level. So I thought, it, I, I think they found kind of the right guy from the right sort of area to, um, to fill a spot there. I wonder, I think it's proven to be a little bit difficult for guys to come in and especially join Nebraska's program this late in the summer. Um, and then walk right in and be a starter or walk right in and be a, a valuable player for them. So we'll see where, where they end up with that. Um, compared to guys who have who have been here, but it is experience, and that is important. So I I think that is um, a really really nice ad for Nebraska, especially after the injury, like you said in the spring game. So um, is that probably it? I mean, you never say never, but it's July now. I mean, you're you're probably turning the calendar. You're getting close to turning it over to all right. We got to prep for the season rather than 
we're in kind of this like development mode. Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, is is there one more out there? I forgot to mention David Hufkin. Um, oh, yeah. and he's not he's not uh, in the fold yet as far as like physically being on the ground. He's he's I believe back in Germany um, after he made his official visit to Nebraska a couple of weeks ago, trying to get his visa figured out. But he's another guy, a fifth player, an offensive tackle of all things, unless unless he goes over to the defensive side, which. Um, from the looks of him, he could do. Yep. Um, so a big lineman up front on the edge, one on one side or the other, which is another place where you can always use another player. So um, that 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 stretches back to that conversation about who Nebraska's added for 2024 since the end of the spring. But but yeah, I'm with you on on the importance of of right, and I think he can Sire right. I think he can uh, he can step in corners a spot where you know yeah. it, it's not an easy position, but Hey, cover this guy and, you know, know the scheme. You're going to be asked to do some different things. Um, Evan Cooper has as much as any coach on the Nebraska roster had shown an ability in his one year to be able to take players who were, you know, maybe not living up to their potential like a Tommy Hill um, and turning them into, into um, important pieces, key pieces, parts of the Nebraska defense that that it can rely on. Deshaun Singleton is another guy in the secondary who was languishing, and then there he goes, step stepping up. Um, Omar Brown last year, same kind of thing. So he did it with numerous players in year one, and that, that's what Nebraska will be looking to get from him with uh, with Sire Wright, the USC transfer here this fall. All right, Mitch, that'll wrap it up. Um, we'll we'll be back with a couple more episodes this week as we send you into your long your long 4th of July weekend and um you know we're getting close to i believe it's 9 Saturdays 9 Saturdays from from this Saturday so Fantastic. Uh, until Nebraska kicks off their season but first we want to remind you that Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24/7 streaming channel on YouTube and it's available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app Locked On Sports today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, like us, plus our national shows that cover every league. Find Locked On Sports Today, now available on the free Fire TV channels app. 